Welcome to the Web Wheel Products Wheel End Installation Guide for 10 stud hub piloted or FN mounting systems. Proper installation is critical. It helps you get maximum reliability, durability, and performance from your Web Wheel Products components. This video shows you how easy it is to do the job right in just a few easy steps. Begin by inspecting the nuts and studs. Make sure they are clean and clear of any paint, dirt, or grease. A wire brush can be used to remove any rust or foreign material that could bind the wheel nuts. If the stud or nut threads are damaged or worn, replace with the proper hardware. If a stud is broken, replace it and each stud next to the broken one. If two or more studs are broken, all studs must be replaced. Use only the correct matched components when mounting disc wheels. Hub piloted FN wheels use this two-piece flange nut. Do not use stud piloted or ball seat cap nuts with a hub piloted mounting system. These types of fasteners are used for ball seat mounting systems only. For additional fastener maintenance guidelines, please refer to TMC Recommended Practice 656, Hub and Spoke Wheel Fastener Maintenance. Now inspect the hub's mounting flange for damage or wear. A straight edge may be used to verify flatness. There should be no visible gaps between the flange and straight edge. If there is a visible gap, the hub must be replaced. If you are uncertain about your particular hub, please contact the Web Product Engineering Department for assistance. Next, inspect the drum pilot pads for any signs of damage. The left side of the screen shows a good hub pilot. The right side of the screen shows a damaged hub pilot. This ridge indicates damage from a previously misinstalled brake drum. This damage will prevent future drums from centering properly, so any hub with this type of damage must be replaced. Before mounting the brake drum to the hub, make sure that the hub and drum mounting flanges and pilots are free and clear from any corrosion, dirt, or excessive paint. A wire brush may be used to clean these surfaces. Assembling painted, dirty, or rusty components can prevent the wheel from seating properly and lead to bolted joint failure. Hub piloted studs require two drops of 30 weight oil applied to the last two or three threads on each stud. Hub piloted two-piece flange nuts require two drops of 30 weight oil applied between the nut and the washer. Do not allow any lubricant to get on the mounting face of the brake drum or wheels. Note that this oiling procedure is only required for hub piloted or FN mounting systems. Once the hub and drum mating surfaces are clean and clear from any corrosion, dirt or debris, and the studs and nuts have been properly lubricated, rotate the hub so that one of the brake drum pilot pads is at the 12 o'clock position. In the event that the hub has one continuous pilot rather than separate pilot pads, simply position any stud at 12 o'clock. Install the brake drum, taking care not to damage the threads on the mounting studs. Make sure to push the drum against the hub until it is seated over the hub mounting pilot and firmly against the mounting flange with no interference. This is necessary to ensure that the hub and drum mounting pilots have engaged correctly. If any interference exists, verify hub and drum compatibility. Contact the Web Wheel Product Engineering Department if the problem persists. Next, install the inner and outer disc wheels, taking care not to damage the mounting studs. Push the wheel firmly against the mounting plate of the drum until seated. If installing dual wheels, make sure that the outer disc wheel is seated flush against the inner. Once the brake drum and disc wheels have been properly mounted onto the hub, hand tighten the two-piece flange nuts on the studs in the 12 o'clock, then 6 o'clock positions. Continue installing the remaining two-piece flange nuts, hand tightening to each stud. Verify that all of the two-piece flange nuts are hand tightened and that the hub's brake drum pilot pad is in the 12 o'clock position. Then tighten the two-piece flange nuts to approximately 50 foot-pounds of torque in the crisscross sequence. It is extremely important to follow this sequence. Start with the stud located nearest the 12 o'clock position. Continue tightening the remaining nuts in proper sequence to 50 foot-pounds. It is important to begin with the hub's drum pilot in the 12 o'clock position to ensure that the drum and wheel are seated properly on their respective pilots. When all of the nuts have been tightened to 50 foot-pounds, fully tighten the nuts to the specified torque in this chart. Follow the same sequence. The stud corresponding to the hub's brake drum pilot should remain at the 12 o'clock position throughout the tightening sequence. Proper torque is important. 
Use a calibrated torque wrench to verify proper torque on each nut. Insufficient torque can cause stud breakage and damage to wheel pilots. Too much torque can overstress the studs and strip the threads. Do not deviate from these recommended torque levels. Doing so may be dangerous and result in loose wheels. If air wrenches are used, they must be periodically calibrated in both directions for proper torque output. Use a hand torque wrench to check the air wrench output. If output is not correct, take the necessary steps to adjust. For additional air wrench maintenance guidelines, please refer to TMC RP222, User's Guide to Wheels and Rims. Once the torque is verified on each stud, make sure that the drum and wheels are properly seated and installed on the hub. This may be accomplished by visually inspecting the hub pilots to ensure that all components are flush with one another and uniformly centered about each hub pilot. Rotate the assembly to check for any irregularities. You may also verify that the brake drum is properly centered on the axle by using a dial indicator. This is accomplished by placing the dial indicator needle perpendicular to the drum's braking surface and attaching the opposing end to a stationary object, such as the axle. Once the indicator is secure, perpendicular to the braking surface, and set to zero, slowly rotate the assembly one complete revolution, 360 degrees, while visually monitoring the indicator. The total indicated runout, or TIR, should not exceed 20 thousandths of an inch. Should the TIR exceed this value, disassemble the drum and wheels and repeat the installation process from the beginning. For both new installations and repair installations, the assembly components will seat naturally, and torque may drop after the first 50 to 100 miles of operation. Check the flange nuts for proper torque after this 50 to 100 mile interval and retighten to the specified torque value. If this retightening schedule is found to be impractical, you may refer to TMC RP237, Retorquing Guidelines for Disc Wheels. It is recommended that a preventative maintenance program be established to periodically check for wear, damage, proper nut torque, wheel alignment, cracks, and leaks. Such a program will help ensure maximum performance, service life, and safety for the life of your web wheel products. For a comprehensive list of additional wheel end configuration installation guidelines, please refer to TMC RP222, User's Guide to Wheels and Rims.